Good morning, what's happening? Well, I'll tell you what's happening. Hornby have sent me a new HM7000 chip to replace the one that got burnt out when I used my Gauge Master analog controller to power the chip. Now, this is important. When you read the box of this, it says try mode functions with HM, DCC app control, DCC and DC controllers. There we go, hopefully you can see that, you can look at it yourself online. Now, people have said to me, well don't you read the small print? Well actually, the small print, for those that do not know, is a PDF of 130 pages. And here's a couple of them for you, which you can look up on the Hornby website, pages 16 and 17. Now how many people, before they buy anything, will read 130 pages of a PDF document before they buy any electrical appliance? Even when you buy a house, are you going to read 130 pages of a PDF document? But let's get further to the point. On page 16 they have a warning for me, which you can see in red, which you can look at yourselves. And the warning is they don't want to fire and they talk about a power supply exceeding 27 volts. They talk about using batteries and they talk about a laptop power supplies which are unstable. No mention of analog controllers. They do mention in their PDF is that there could be problems which may apply to lower end train controls which employ, employ power width modulation frequency ranges of 50 Hz upwards and 100 Hz most common. Please check your analog controller specification for more information read a unit's output. Now, first thing is, would the average 14, 15 year old kid know where to check the specification of their analog controllers? I don't even know where to check the power width modulation of my analog controller. And they talk about lower end controllers. Well, I'm sorry, the Gauge Master analog controllers are not lower end. They're warranted for life, they're used by everybody. You can see them on social media. There is absolutely no problem with them. Now, what has been suggested to me is, well, why don't you buy a Hornby power module? That's fine, you can buy an R737 from Hornby for £60 and plug it into your track. Now if you've just got a single loop, that's perfect and there's a picture going to be coming up here somewhere where you'll see that I can run analogue and digital with a two throw switch. So for me to employ this Hornby power supply, it would mean wiring another third spur to warm my switches, probably three or four hours work, 50 pounds an hour labour, 400 quid. <coughs> to power something that's come after all these controllers, let's not forget this uh, HMDCC is new. It's up to that device, this device, to be able to function with what is already here. As it says on the box, try mode. So we carry on. Now, you buy a Hornby controller for 60 pounds, you can buy a Prodigy Express starter pack for £150 and you know that it's not going to blow up the chips in the locomotives, the TTS chips, the lock sound chips, that leg them up. it's not going to blow them up. And you know that if you put an analogue supply from an, an, any analogue controller, they're not going to blow up with a different type of chip. And you've just spent another 70 quid, which is peace of mind. Now, let's get on to the positives here. Now, with the HMDCC, I've been told I can use my Gauge Master Prodigy 2 as a power supply to run this chip, which I'm going to show you in review. Also, I can use the number I allocate to the Loco in the HM7000 app and run it separately with my Gauge Master Prodigy 2. 
I'm going to try this and, and, and I will show you in my review of the system. Now, this is important. When you've got a locomotive, if you're running analog and digital and you've got a locomotive on a track and you flick a point and you've got analog power going from your analog controller to it, it will either start up and move or, in case of TTS there's no sound, it will start up quietly and move. Now if you've got a loco in a siding with the HMDCC or HM7000 chip and you've left a point open inadvertently, which in all honesty we all do, it's just going to blow up. That is the issue here. Now Hornby are aware that chips are blowing up. They are doing their best to sort it out. And I believe they will and I sincerely hope they do because this is absolutely fantastic. But if you can't run it from the quality analog controllers, what hope have you got? But an important caveat here is this. Hornby Seller controller, an HM2000. It's a two and a half amp controller. It's an absolutely fantastic analog controller. I use it on my Christmas layout. However, it's one of the DC controllers not recommended for their new chip, which I find is unbelievable. So anyway, let, 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 let's, let's get to the summarization here. If you're going to run HMDCC, my advice is do not run it unless you're using an R7337 power supply, which is a Hornby power supply, 60 pounds, which is designed for this controller. In my opinion, any of you with any analog controllers other than this that run it, they are risk blowing up their chip. Now, the, the thing that amazes me with this Hornby PDF, there are many analogs on the on the mark controllers on the market and in use. We have not tested them all. Well, all they appear to have tested is is the Hornby ones. Well. <laughs> How many people run Hornby analog controllers? Most of them are Gage Master. Anyway, look, you've got to do what's right for you. But be aware what you do with this HMDCC chip until Hornby have fixed it. Thank you for watching.